from baseball.com and today we're looking at a tiny but very professional and super versatile tube amp for bass guitars from a company called Puton Amps from Greece and uh, this model is called The Offset and uh, I would say let's check it out. <laughs> I've owned a good bunch of uh, tube amps for bass, which doesn't necessarily make me an expert, but one thing that I can definitely say that this amp is special and I would even say it's truly spectacular. Uh, we will get to that in a minute. Uh, first of all, it weighs only 6.6 .6 kilos, which really isn't much for a tube amp. As you might know, many of them weigh like 15, 20 kilos, some even more, so this is almost nothing. Um, it delivers 60 watts uh, coming from two KT66 tubes and uh, those can be interchanged with EL34s, uh, 6LE6s, C6V6s and 5881s. Um, of course you shouldn't do that on your own unless you really know what you're doing, uh, there's a bias adjustment required. The offset covers a wide range of different typical tube amp sounds. It doesn't really matter if you're into vintage sounds like an Ampeg B15 or something more clean and modern or even like super modern which is almost brutal to melt your face off. Um, this amp has you covered which is very unusual for a tube amp. <laughs> When this amp arrived, uh, the shipping box was completely messed up by the shipping company, which is not the fault of the manufacturer. He packed it very decently, almost like a tank. But uh, yeah, shipping companies, they break things. That's the job, I guess. Um, however, it's a surprise and a wonder almost that none of the tubes broke and this, the amp is still fully functional. Only the wooden cage uh, was destroyed and uh, here's what the amp usually looks like. But I actually like it like that. Uh, if this was my amp, I'd even prefer it like this. Uh, other than that, this amp seems very well built. It even has these absorbing rubber feet that you usually find only on very expensive hi-fi systems. When I tried this amp for the first time, I was immediately blown away by uh, how good it sounds. And as soon as I started using those switches here, uh, which changed some little things in the preamp, um, I suddenly got the impression that I was now playing a completely different amp like a minute ago, which is crazy, like crazy good. <laughs> So let's have a look at the controls. On the front we have two different input gain pots. Uh, one is called normal and uh, the other one is called bright and uh, this is pretty much exactly what you're getting. If you're going for a clean sound with uh, open highs, uh, you choose of course bright and uh, if you're going for rather mellow and more typical tube amp sounds, uh, choose the normal one. Of course you can also combine these two to find the right blend for your tone. The next section that follows are these two mini toggle switches here. Uh, the first one changes the characteristic of the preamp. JTM makes it smoother sounding, JMP is a bit brighter and in the 1987 position both input channels get their mids and treble frequencies boosted. The next switch is called raw and smooth. Uh, in the smooth setting you are adding more tube compression. The EQ is as it is with the most tube amps uh, of course passive. Uh, that means it doesn't act like the EQs you know from uh, your other bass amps or your active bass EQ. Uh, the controls for bass, mids and treble aren't working individually, but uh, influence each other. 
For a passive EQ, I have to say it's very, very easy to use. Uh, with some other amps, you can spend a lot of time finding the right setting. Here it's super easy and uh, intuitive. My favorite thing about this EQ is actually that you can disengage it with this switch here. If you do that, this amp becomes super direct sounding and something that I've personally never heard from a tube amp before. It's very clean and punchy and amazing if you want to emulate the rather direct sound of a solid state amp. Besides all this, we have a presence control and a master volume. On the back we have a line out and uh, three different speaker outs to be used with 2, 4, 8 or 16 ohms. <laughs> glad we are through all the details now. Uh, of course they're interesting and uh, make this amp so versatile at the end, but um, this amp can be used completely intuitively. You don't need a manual or anything like that. There's no switches that you use and you're not sure what happened or even if something happened, which some amps have for some reason. Um, it's all very obvious. You, every switch has a distinct sound and just stick to the sound you like better for whatever you're going for. Um, of course you should have the speaker out thing right. That's very important for tube amps, but other than that, very easy to use and uh, whatever sound you're going for, you will easily find it. I can't praise this amp high enough. Uh, as I said before, I've owned a good bunch of uh, different tube bass amps over the years and I've played many, many more. I guessed almost all of the amps that played a role in bass and music history and... Uh, but I've never experienced something like this before. And that's because uh, tube amps are usually not versatile. That's just not what they are. Um, when you're, you're going for a tube amp, you have a certain sound in your head that you want to realize with your bass and you grab your bass, you go to a music shop that has a good selection of amps, you try everything and if you're lucky, you find the amp that does exactly what you're going for, you buy it and you're happy. And uh, then you have, of course, the EQ to fine tune uh, where you, yeah, to your sound. Uh, but I've never uh, experienced an amp that uh, seems to have almost all of these characteristics, these different sounds like, like a blues amp or metal amp or these different sounds where you would like to use a tube amp. Uh, but, but I've never played an amp that has all of them in it and this one can do it. And uh, I'm very blown away by this. I also always thought that um, the, the amp of a, or the, the characteristic of an amp is very much uh, dictated by the power amps and they will always decide where, where the amp is heading sound wise and uh, this amp also has showed me that this definitely was a misconception. It can sound like many 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 different amps. Usually I don't care so much uh, about bass amps anymore to be honest because a couple of years ago I bought a Glockenklang Buzzard Classic uh, uh, which is a, one of the best if not the best bass amp that you can buy for money. Uh, I could buy basses any day if I had the money. Uh, they are fun and uh, it's fun to have 
different sounds and, and, and different bases for different inspiration and whatever. But uh, with tube amps, I have this amp. It sounds fantastic with every bass uh, and I'm completely settled. Uh, this was until I got this amp. Uh, now I know that I need a tube amp again. Um, I had all these tube amps, but uh, I sold them when I got the Glockenklang because uh, I just uh, could combine it with a tube preamp and get yeah better results than I got uh, f for recording at least uh, than I got with the most tube amps. So that's what I used until now. Uh, yeah, now I guess I have to get one of those. Unfortunately, it's a little bit pricey, but that's because um, this is uh, the guy who builds these amps uh, makes them completely customized. So you can, when you buy one of those, you will not buy like a standard stock uh, amp that he has somewhere on the shelf. He makes an amp for you. You can choose a lot of different features, colors of the housing and stuff like this. This, of course, has a certain price. Uh, but uh, this guy told me that um, he he's buying only the best parts from all of the world to build these amps. So there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of engineering going into these and uh, it's very obvious that that uh, this turned out very well um two and a half grand is a lot of money but i think it's worth every cent because when you have this you will never look for anything else of course only if you need an amp that sounds completely different or you need something bigger because 60 watts is of course not an amp for big stages um I guess that's it. Uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding this amp, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will get back to you. Uh, if it's a bit out of my range of knowledge for tube amps, uh, I know how they sound, but I'm not very educated when it comes to tubes and all these little parts and things that are in an amp. But I will forward them to the uh, Michael is the guy who is building these amps, and I guess he will also gladly get back to you. Um, that's it for today. Have a wonderful week and month, year, life, afterlife, and uh, see you next time. Bye.